Remember the story of how the earth came to be? Today, let's hear the story of the earth coming to life with plants and all kinds of animals. Think back to when the earth was born, just a drop of light and heat, full of commotion and confusion. And in all that, each particle was given a set of laws. The earth cooled and settled down according to these laws, water, rocks, and the air surrounding it. The earth was a beautiful little pearl lit up by her mother, the sun. The sun could not stop looking at it. It looked day and night. One day the sun saw something was not quite in order. Something was beginning to happen. There was trouble. It rained a lot on this earth. As the water passed through the air, it got mixed with different gases, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrous oxide. This made an acid rain that washed over the rocks and washed parts of them into the sea. There were lots of storms and water pounding on the rocks, breaking them down more and more. The sea was becoming full of the mineral salts. The land was being washed away. It looked like the order that had been created was beginning to be lost. Who was causing this? Who was the culprit? Sun looked at water and said, Water, you must be the culprit. You are washing the salts into the sea. But water said, Who, me? What have I done? Remember how I am made, and the laws that I must follow. When I become hot, I rise up as a vapor. But if I get cold, I must fall down as a liquid. Since I am a liquid, I must press downward and sideways. And whenever I see a hollow, I have to enter. What can I do? I don't have any choice. And my sister air stirs me up and carries me around, dropping me on the rocks. It's her fault that I have to move. Talk to her. Air said, Me? I like that. I was given the job of covering the earth with layers of blankets so she won't be cold. I have to always cover her, but she has a big tummy and her head and feet are frozen. I have to keep on the move to cover them. Whenever I go near water, she jumps on my back to take a ride. That's fine when it's flat. But when I run into mountains, it's different. It is hard climbing mountains, and I get so tired carrying water up the mountain that I have to drop her. I can't play all of the time. I have important work to do. It's the fault of those rocks. Why does the earth have to have such a wrinkly skin? Rocks have no consideration at all. They do not move to let me pass. And sometimes they get so hot that when I go near them, I have to climb up. To avoid burning. When they are freezing, I cringe. The rock said with one voice, Why do you blame us? We are not doing anything but sitting around. Do you think we want to get hot? The sun shines on us and we cannot help it. We are made this way. If you ask us, son, it is your fault. You are the culprit. And so it went on. No one wanted to be blamed. But the trouble just got worse and worse. You see, everything was at fault. Everything was acting just the way it should, following its own laws. And yet the beautiful order was being threatened. Soon the earth would no longer be a beautiful pearl in space. Something had to be done. But what could be done? A wonderful thing happened. Something new was created. Things so small that you could not see them. These tiny particles were given a gift that would save the earth. This gift was sensitivity. These new particles also had some rules. In order to exist, these particles had to eat and grow. But not all of them ate the same things. They were also given the ability to create others like themselves. And so life came like this, 
as tiny particles in the water. The tiny particles of life began to eat and eat and eat, and they began to clean up the sea by eating the mineral salts in the water. From the mineral salts, some built shells around their bodies for protection. When they died, their shells dropped to the floor of the sea with the salt strapped in them. Time passed, and layer upon layer of these tiny shells built up. They were like the pages of a book, some of these pages that were laid down long before we were born were left for us to read to tell us what happened long, long ago. Now these tiny creatures were made of just one tiny cell. This tiny cell did all the work that needed to be done, all the eating, breathing, growing, and getting rid of what the cell didn't want. These tiny creatures drifted around the seas cleaning the waters for a long time. Time went on, and some of these creatures seem to have said, let's join together and be a bigger creature. We could do things better that way. Thus, they formed into bigger creatures made of many cells. They grew, multiplied, and fed in the sea as they drifted about. Then, some of the creatures thought, Instead of each cell doing the same thing, it would be much better if some of us did one job and others did other jobs. Some could do the eating, and some could do the breathing, some could do the moving, and so on. So, the cells divided the work up amongst themselves. Some cells were to do the eating, others were to do the moving, and others would do the breathing. Thus came creatures with legs, mouths, hearts, lungs, and so on, creatures with organs. When the Book of Earth is open to the first page, we can see that all of these creatures were there. The tiny one-celled creatures, the multi-celled creatures, and those with different organs.